So you bought an IS-300 and you want to turbo it, you want to make some more power out of it. If you're not part of the lucky 15%, turns out it's going to be automatic. So in this video, I'm going to walk you guys through how to basically build your transmission. Uh, the same transmission that's in the IS-300 is also used in the SC, the LS, the GS. Basically any rear wheel drive Lexus made from 98 to 2005 uses the Toyota A650e and that's what we're going to work on today. Now before we get started, I should note this modification will make your transmission shift harder so it'll be a little bit more aggressive and you'll be able to feel it, but the idea is it'll be safer for the transmission and the transmission will hold that power. And in addition to this modification, I also highly recommend getting yourself a lot of cooling, uh, you know, installing another separate external transmission cooler. Everything on this modification is going to be coming from iselite.com, uh, my buddy Cody Graham kind of pioneered this whole little modification that we've been doing and he ran it in his car for a couple years making over 650 horsepower to the wheels so the transmission will hold the power as long as you do not overheat it and uh, beat on it too much from low rpms what's in third gear you can do highway pulls all you want uh, with this modification now obviously the transmission is not in the vehicle anymore we highly recommend you pull it out of the car to do this uh, modification the first thing you're going to want to do after draining all the fluid is take off the oil pan uh, there is 19 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, so there's a good chance that your oil pan is going to be stuck on there. This oil pan has already been off before, so it'll come right off. But to basically get this off, you want to hit it with a rubber mallet and wedge a screwdriver in here, obviously being very careful not to mar the mating surfaces. But you'll have to just work your way to get this off. So now that you've got the oil pan off, the very first thing you want to do is take off your transmission oil filter. So this is technically a cleanable filter it's a little mesh in here so you can just take it off with these uh, four bolts here and then you can spray it out with brake cleaner and make sure that all the little metal, metal shavings are out of there and then you do not need to replace it it is reusable unless it is torn as you can see the mesh that is torn here then you'll need to replace it the next step after removing the transmission filter would be to take off uh, this wiring uh, harness well let's just pull straight up as you can see, and the rest of these are just little clips that you'll need to squeeze and pull out. Okay, now that you have your wiring harness off, the next, the next step is to take off your valve body out of the transmission. There is a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts, but there's also eight millimeter bolts, as you can see. We're only gonna be taking off 10 millimeter bolts. Leave the smaller bolts on there. We're gonna take off all 10 millimeter bolts, except for these two right here that hold this metal bracket on and this one right here in the corner. So we're leaving only three 10 millimeter bolts onto the valve body. Every, every other 10 millimeter bolt is gonna come off. Now it's very important when you guys take these 10 millimeter bolts off to keep track of where they come from, which hole they come out of, because there's four different lengths that they can be. So there's gonna be long bolts and short bolts and you need to make sure that you keep track of them so you can save yourself a lot, more, a lot of time when you put it back together. The last thing we should note before taking the valve body off is that the shifter needs to be in between these two little wheels here. This little peg needs to be right in here. If you forget to align that in the middle when you put it back together, you put the transmission back in the car and it won't shift and you'll have to redo the whole thing. So go ahead and take off uh, all these 10 millimeter bolts all around the uh, circumference and then there's a couple in the middle as well that you need to keep track of. That's it. The shifter spring so that comes off as an assembly. And last but not least, this is the long one. The only really long one. And there's your valve body assembly. Now that the valve body is out of the way, the very first thing you want to do is make sure you do not lose this little ball bearing here and there's a spring under it which you do not want to lose as well. If you're doing this modification in the car, this will fall out, so make sure you pay attention for it. Now the actual process of shimming the accumulators is pretty straightforward, it's just a little technical. The first three accumulators, you want to shim 14 to 18 millimeters. The last one here is going to be 8 to 12 millimeters. The higher, the, the more you shim them, the more aggressive the shifts will be. So if you want to try to keep it a little bit less aggressive, you want to do eight, uh, 14 millimeters on these. Uh, and then if you want it more aggressive, you'll go to 18. Same with this one between 8 and 12. Now one thing to note is that these accumulators are tapered, so at the bottom they're only 19 millimeters and they taper all the way up to 21 millimeters. So 
you want to go out and buy washers that are that uh, that according to that diameter. But the easiest way to go, do it is for the first two accumulators, we can use five pennies and five nickels. That gives you 18 millimeters. You want to put the pennies in first. And you want to make sure they, they lay flat. Five pennies, and then you'll do the five nickels. And then you want to grab your spring and put the spring in and hold the spring in like this so your change does not fall out. There you go. You'll notice that it's sticking out quite a bit now. That's because we've shimmed it. That's the whole goal of this mod. Now that you've got your first accumulator shimmed, you got to repeat the process on the second one, which you can use the five pennies and five nickels again. For this third one here, the inside diameter is 16 millimeters, so you're gonna have to go out and find uh, some washers that are 16 millimeters around and get enough to get 14 to 18 millimeters thick. Now this last one right here uh, is again 21 millimeters, so you can use nickels there. Okay, so we showed you guys how to uh, shim the first three accumulators and it was pretty straightforward. This fourth one here is a little bit different, mainly because there's no um, real bucket here to put your change into. And remember you want to do 8 to 12 millimeters on this one. So what we're going to do instead is take the spring out and we're going to put our change in there first. Like that. You'll notice that this cap has a hole in it. You don't want to block any holes with any uh, any holes that the fluid is going to be going through. So that's why we ended up putting the shims inside of these buckets because there's no holes here but because there's a hole on top of here, we cannot put the shims there. So we gotta put the shim under the spring. And there we go. Now we are ready to put our valve, our valve body on and put the transmission back together. If you'll notice, this is the stock one and this is the shimmed one. It sticks out quite a bit. You're gonna have a very hard time putting this together when all these springs are uh, pushing up against it. So before you even put this valve cover, uh, the valve body back on, you need to get a lint-free cloth and really, really clean this mating surface here extremely well uh, on both sides because if there's any debris here in this gasket, you're going to lose hydraulic pressure, which is obviously what the transmission uses to shift. So once you get it all back together, all nice and cleaned up, what you're going to want to do after that is uh, obviously having a second hand helps, but you're going to want to kind of compress the springs on the, a little bit and use the long screw in the middle, get that started and that'll hold it so you can get the rest of your bolts down uh, started on there. So now that you've got the whole valve body and the rest of the transmission assembled, the last thing we need to do is up the line pressure of the transmission so the mods that we made can actually be useful. And to do that, it is super easy. You see this uh, stock, uh, the screw here? It, right now it is in the stock uh, formation. All you gotta do is get a flathead, push it in, and turn it one tooth over. And that is high pressure. All right, now that we've got the line pressure increased and the accumulator shimmed, a couple last minute things before we put the uh, oil pan back on. Remember to have uh, your shift fork here aligned in between those two little wheels. And you'll want to clean off your magnets here in the oil pan. If you want to upgrade them to a little bit bigger magnets, you can also do that as well. And that's it. You are ready to put the transmission back in the car.